10 Best Places to Travel in July 2023 It's school holiday time, which makes it peak summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Why not spend Independence Day on the water, at one of the USA's lesser-known lakes, or slip on a costume or two to celebrate Marvel and more at a confab in California? Then again, it's also a great time to venture to New Zealand and immerse in the traditions and practices of indigenous culture there. You deserve a vacation this month, and we have 10 places that are well worth visiting in July. 1. Antigua, Guatemala. July is great for a high-octane high holy day. Antigua is the one-time capital of Guatemala, a colonial-era city that earned UNESCO World Heritage Site status more than 40 years ago for its extraordinary Baroque architecture. The city was preserved in this state largely thanks to its earthquake-prone site, which prompted the colonial government to decamp to a new, more stable location. There are grand buildings, cobbled streets, and, notably, ruins that were left as was after the last major quake in 1976. See the Cathedral of Santiago. This month, on July 25th, the city's residents celebrate their patron saint, James, on Dia de Santiago. Expect fireworks, parades, concerts, and carnival rides. Alongside this Catholic festival, Though, don't miss the La Fiesta Nacional Indigena de Guatemala or Rabin Ajao in Coban, a 5.5-hour drive from Antigua. It lasts for the final two weeks of July and celebrates indigenous Mayan culture, with traditional dancing and music, plus a festivity-capping beauty pageant. The women who compete to be queen are assessed, in part, on their commitment to Mayan values and traditions. Where to stay? Try some bargain-priced luxury at the 15-room Hacienda Villa Boki, 10 minutes from town in its own verdant gardens, all set against the backdrop of the Agua Volcano. How to get there? There are non-stop flights from LAX on Avianca, Volaris, and United, plus service from JFK on JetBlue and an American flight from MIA. 2. Queenstown, New Zealand. July is great for a new, indigenous celebration in the great outdoors. The newest public holiday in New Zealand, first established last year, will be celebrated on July 14 in 2023. It commemorates Maori New Year, which is celebrated when the dazzlingly bright Mata Riki, also known as the Pleiades or Seven Sisters, constellation first appears in the early morning sky here. Head down to the outdoorsy hub of Queenstown in the heart of the South Island to celebrate. The main drag of Buckingham Street will be lit up by installations and projections from the team behind the town's Sun at Lumiere Festival Luma. The deep countryside here is free of light pollution and better for enjoying the star-speckled sky. Make sure to take a helicopter ride to the Milford Sound, one of the world's wettest places, where the rainfall turns the near sheer surrounding cliffsides into impromptu waterfalls. And don't miss the chance to zip up and down the Dart River on one of the boats, which can hit up to more than 50 miles per hour. Where to stay? Try the 14-room Matakauri Lodge, one of the pioneering hotels here. Its sleek Kelly Hoppin on the piste decor is appealing, and the lakeside perch is unbeatable. How to get there? There are regular flights from New Zealand's capital, Auckland down to the South Island, which takes around two hours. Coming from the US East Coast? Consider Air New Zealand's new service from JFK, a 17-hour non-stop direct. 3. Aix and Provence, France. July is great for an affordable, world-class dose of classical music. Vive la France, indeed. Why not spend Bastille Day in Provence this year, an alternative to our own Independence Day with a little extra je ne sais quoi. Of course, the usual fireworks and celebrations, we'd suggest learning the words to La Marseillaise in advance but the 75th Festival International d'Art Lyrique is also happening in Aix-en-Provence, which runs from July 4 to 24. This is a world-class celebration of classical music, with a heavy emphasis on opera. Performances this year will include Mozart's Cosi Fan Tutte, Kurt Weill's Threepenny Opera, and Verdi's Otello. Be sure to tour some local vineyards, too. The wine from Maison X, think X in large letters on the label, is a familiar sight stateside, and the producer is the largest in the region. To wrangle VIP access to less well-known spots, though, consider working on an itinerary with a travel specialist like Red Savannah with deep connections in the region. Where to stay? 
The seven-bedroom Moss Michel Villa sits on a 50-acre vineyard, is the ideal place to hole up with some locally produced rosé on a balmy summer evening. How to get there? Nice is the easiest international hub to head to Provence. Try the all-biz bargain carrier La Company for a surprisingly affordable, lie-flat option from New York City. It's a two-hour drive from there up to X. 4. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. July is great for getting out on a lesser traffic lake. Where better to spend July 4th than lakeside? The 25-mile-long northern Idaho town delights, with more than 135 miles of shoreline and extra long days to enjoy it this month. The sun sets close to 9 p.m. in July. The Bands on the Boats Summer Cruise Series features local bands on floating barges throughout July and August, while the best swimming spots are either Sanders or city beaches. Life here centers on the water so much that the local golf course even has a so-called floating green tee up here and take the course's mahogany boat across to the 14th hole, which changes position regularly using an underwater cable system to keep players on their toes. Come to fish on the lake, too. The Chinook salmon are a standout, but also expect to catch trout, bass, and northern pike. Away from the water there's Brewfest, where local breweries offer a chance to sample their tipples on July 8. There's also Silverwood, the local theme park with more than 70 rides, including the corkscrew. When it was built in 1975, it was the first modern roller coaster to tip its riders upside down. Where to stay? The two-year-old, 29-room one lakeside has spacious, apartment-sized suites with full kitchens and washer-dryers, by far the most appealing new lodging option in town. How to get there? The best airport is across state lines. Spokane and Washington, just 40 minutes drive away. 5. San Diego, California. July is great for indulging your inner nerd. From July 19th to 23 this year, Cosplay Spiritual Home returns to San Diego, the original and still largest Comic Con, which first took place here in 1970. Last year, more than 135,000 people attended the event, canceled due to COVID 19 for the previous two years. Expect this year's number to more than match that tally. This year's lineup won't disappoint. It includes the cast and creators of Disney's The Proud Family and Dexter's Laboratory creator Jendi Tartakovsky. Where to stay? The 211-room Kimpton Hotel in the downtown Gaslamp Quarter just reopened with a new name, the Alma, and a snazzier decorative scheme that draws on classic Mexican textiles. There are direct services to SAN from many airports, including Albuquerque on Southwest and San Luis Obispo on Alaska Airlines. 6. North Jutland, Denmark. July is great for hitting the surf and some museums in this unlikely locale. The Alvar Aalto-designed Kunsten Museum of Modern Art has long been the main draw to the one-time industrial hub of Aalborg, in northern Denmark. There's an intriguing new museum that examines the Cold War period of Europe, the Regan Vest, which opened in February. Visitors can tour the bunker itself and explore the newly built museum above ground. Head over to Klitmaler, aka Cold Hawaii, on the west coast, a 90-minute drive, to tackle some impressive swells. Denmark's prime surfing locale, with more than 30 designated spots. Note that even in summer, though, the waters around the fishing village remain icy cold, so make sure to pack an extra thick wetsuit. Where to stay? Perch on the waterfront in Aalborg at the newly renovated Pier 5 Hotel. Its 154 rooms have just undergone a mid-century style refresh, with dark walls and mod wooden furniture. How to get there? It's easier than ever. As of April 2023, Copenhagen-based SAS Airlines launched a new direct route from Newark to Aalborg, which will run throughout the summer season. 7. Havar, Croatia. July is great for a coastal counterpart to the crowded Med. Havar is often eclipsed among foreign visitors by Games of Thrones bolstered Dubrovnik, but Croatians cherish this breezy, historic island of cobblestone streets and UNESCO-endorsed heritage. Havar is a charmingly retro getaway miles from the cookie-cutter waterfronts of the nearby Mediterranean. Come July 14-15 for its Lavender Festival, which takes place over two days in the tiny, 14th-century village of Velo Grabia. Another thing to look out for while on the island is aloe lace, an ethereal riff on the classic lace made throughout Croatia. Local nuns weave it from the plant's stringy leaves. 
Where to stay, Riva Marina Havar Hotel. The 100-room Riva Marina reopened. Think hammocks, swaying palm trees, and private terraces. How to get to Havar. United Airlines is running a seasonal direct flight four times weekly from Newark to Croatia's coast in Dubrovnik. Hop a short ferry from there to Havar. 8. Calgary, Canada. July is great for a trip back in time to the Wild West. For 10 days this month, Calgary is the rodeo capital of the world. It hosts the Calgary Stampede from July 7, 162023. Think of this as a celebration of every aspect of rodeo culture. Ranching has been central to Alberta's life and economy. Pitbull will kick off the festival with a performance at Saddledome, and the world's largest outdoor rodeo will take place at GMC Stadium. Pow Wow in that same site will feature competitive dancing, drumming and singing, and the Indian village here will allow visitors to meet with the Five Nations native to southern Alberta. Also note, July 1st is Canada Day. Where to stay? The Dorian is a 137-room boutique hotel, named after Oscar Wilde's most famous creation and with nods to the notorious British author. How to get there? Washington, D.C is the latest U.S. gateway to connect non-stop to Calgary, starting this summer. There is also service from Phoenix, Denver, and Las Vegas, among others. Hurricane Ridge Road is a great drive for views of Olympic National Park. 9. Olympic Peninsula, Washington. July is great for the ultimate Pacific Northwest road trip. Summer is prime road trip season, and consider the Olympic Peninsula as an appealing route for a few days driving in July. Squim on the northeast coast claims to be the lavender capital of North America, with a festival this month, starting on July 21. Head over to Port Townsend, 40 minutes east, after that weekend for its annual Centrum Jazz Festival. The seaside village welcomes musicians from around the country to play here for a week-long bash. Come early in the month. July 7-9 is when the bluegrass from the Forest Festival takes place in Shelton, a small town on the western edge of Puget Sound. Events include canoe racing, a traditional salmon bake, and arts and craft stalls. Where to stay? Head into the almost 1 million acre Olympic National Park to stay at Lake Crescent Lodge, a 100-year-old hotel that sits amid mature fir and hemlock trees, right on the namesake blue-green glacially carved lake. How to get there? Sea is the best starting point to fly in for a road trip. It's a hub for both Alaska and Delta Airlines, which offer services around the region and across the country. 10. The Bahamas. July is great for an alternative Independence Day. Come celebrate an alternative Independence Day this month in this Caribbean island nation, which celebrates exactly 50 years of splitting from British colonial rule on July 10th this year. It will ensure that this year's celebrations are larger than ever, including the National Float Parade and Bahama Rock, which spotlights Bahamian music and is headlined by the Grammy Award-winning Baja Men. For the first 10 days of the month, the country also revels in parties and parades, the peak of which is the summer iteration of Junkanu, a Bahamian fiesta with more than a whiff of Mardi Gras. Expect lots of dancing to music that's heavy on cowbells, goatskin drums, and brass. More well known as a Christmas period bash, it's also held here over Independence Day. The biggest such bash is in downtown Nassau. Where to stay? The Baja Mar complex has a roster of different hotels on site, from the Ultra Lux Rosewood to the party-centric SLS or the Grand Hyatt, where the two-bedroom suites are a great deal for a group. There you have it, make your July count. Thank you for watching.